Good morning, everyone. Uh, and I want to say namaste to everyone who's in the room at the moment. And uh, welcome today. And today we are going to discuss something which is very uh, important. Started on the 1st of October, the TCS. And all of you want to understand what is it going to be, how it's going to be, what all is going to do for you. So there are lots of things about that. But before that, I just want to make some housekeeping announcements to all of you. Uh, all of you are welcome to ask questions. Uh, please be uh, free to ask questions to our experts. On the side, or on the chat functionality, I would like you to please write down your questions. Uh, please mention your name, company affiliation, and if possible, where are you from? Which part of India are you from? After that, we will. Uh, the questions will go through a filtration process. We are not going to ask every question, but we are going to filter those questions, filter the questions for no personal questions, no questions of any personal nature. We do not want comments. We want questions. Uh, and we will then ask those questions to our experts with your name. A lot of you I've seen has, by experience, asked the same question in a different language. You mentioned it. So we will try to club those questions and ask one question to the expert. So we may not be able to take all the names. So do bear with us if that doesn't happen. Uh, so we really like to move at the moment. So you know what the drill is going to be. The experts are going to be. But before I introduce the experts, may I take the liberty of, of, of saying a few things uh, to, to set the tone of what's basically happening. Uh, tax collection at source, is it a good or is it bad? Uh, well, like I always say, uh, a coin has two sides. You can see it from a good point of view or you can see it from a bad point of view. But I would basically say if you've been watching our prime minister very carefully, I think about two years ago, he did hint at that. I remember at one of his speeches, he said that in, in India, there are about 1.5 crores taxpayers, while three crores people travel abroad. I think that was a very straight hint. And I think a lot of our pundits uh, did not get that very correct. And they did not catch on that this could mean uh, taxes like this. Uh, well, the I can only say that the airlines and the hotel industry should uh, keep their ears to the ground. Uh, they could also, uh, the next budget is coming in, so they I do not know what's going to happen for it. But I basically see this as a good part also because the government trusts all of you and they are hoping that you will be their arms uh, to really see this whole thing through and see uh, see this whole challenge go through very, very well. So uh, that's what basically it is. But I don't want to say much today because we have experts who are going to answer all your queries about what's going to happen. But just to say one more thing is that the TCS will be levied on foreign remittance made through liberalized remittance scheme of the RBI and for foreign for buyers foreign travel packages that's something which is very important this requires that a seller for an overseas tour package shall collect tcs at the rate of five percent for a pan and Aadhaar card if it's available if they don't have that then they're supposed to charge a 10 percent on that amount this has started implement it's already implemented on the first of october TCS had created a lot of, lot of apprehensions and worry about with most travel agents. That's why we are here today to discuss this. So today we are here to better understand this with the experts we have. I will introduce the experts one by one. And uh, I would just request when I uh, when I take their names, if they could wave their hand, that'd be one wonderful. Mr. Haridas Bhatt, if you could please just wave your, yeah, there's, there's, he's a chartered accountant for today. Uh, he's a partner with GMJ and company. He completed his BCom honors from the University of Mysore and, and has been a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants since 1986. Haridas specializes in income tax matter, corporates, MNCs, firms, and individuals, and currently is a cooperative member with WIRC and Direct Tax Committee. Mr. Das, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you, Mr. Bhatt. Thank you so much. Going ahead, I'm going to next person I'm going to introduce is Abdul Sheikh. Uh, Abdul, yeah, please. I, I think most of you should know all of these people very well because you've seen them a lot. Is the co-founder of uh, FX Cart and Co. and dot com and FlyRemit.com, which are foreign exchange international remittance digital marketplace. He has led the digital revolution in the retail foreign exchange in India, having processed hundreds of millions of dollars in foreign transactions in just a couple of years. 
I wish uh, we could have got that money anyway, so we don't want to say more of that. Atul is based in Bangalore and is working on bringing innovation to the foreign exchange market to ease the consumer journey. Yeah. Pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you, Abdul. Pleasure. Uh, moving on, uh, the only Sadaji we know today, and I would like to say to everybody, it is his birthday today. So I'm going to first want to wish him, uh, Harman, wish you a very, very happy birthday today. Uh, it's such a pleasure and to have you speaking on your birthday is such a wonderful thing. Uh, his full name is Harman Deep Singh Anand. You, we all popularly, he's known as Harman. In fact, if you say Harman Deep, people will get surprised. But, but Harman, everybody knows, is the co-founder of the Global Panorama Showcase, which we call GPS, and managing director of Jackson, Airline, Jackson Travels. He has been currently uh, appointed and the board member of the Tourism Task Force created by the Maharashtra government under the guidance of Aditya Thakre. Harman believes in sharing his knowledge and has organized various travel industry events, addressing over 10,000 travel colleagues on service tax and GST. He's truly a realistic, passionate, hardworking, and a committed person to the travel industry. Harman has tirelessly worked towards standardizing and helping the industry grow. I can safely say the way I've seen him through his GPS and how he's discussed and dealt with the uh, uh, GST and other issues. He has been uh, quite a strength pillar of strength to the travel industry. Welcome, Harman. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, friends, now what I'm going to do is, without any ado, I'm going to first go with uh, uh, Mr. Haridas Bhatt. Mr. Bhatt, I would like to give this, uh, give you all to hear your introduction remarks, and then uh, we'll go on to the other panelists. So over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, now, let me just, uh, as the uh, hostess already explained to you, uh, this is the government's move to tax the people who spend, as you said, millions of rupees on foreign travel. So, government has a feeling that the millions of rupees which is spent on this uh, foreign travel, LRS and the uh, overseas tour package, whatever name you call it, those people end up not paying taxes. So, they want to bring them into tax net. So that is why they have introduced this uh, TCS. Now, majority of the queries which I received from the traveling people is they get confused with TDS and TCS. So TDS is tax deduction at source and TCS is tax collection at source. Now, you are, your duty is to collect the tax from the OTP buyers, the tour package buyers and pay to the government. That is, you collect and pay how you spend, how you remit, and what you do with your expenditure. That there is nothing to do with it. It is if anybody buys over to tour package from you, then over and above ticket and GST, you have to collect the tax also. As I said, collection of tax. Unfortunately, they have added even the GST in the TCS net. So you have to collect the TCS on the GST also. Uh, you know, quite funnily, the government in the May announced uh, as a, you know, tax soaps to reducing all the tax TDS and TCS rates by 75%. But while announcing that, they missed out intentionally or otherwise, missed out the section which covers LRS and OTP. That is quite funny. And we, and, uh, we were confused earlier. They have sent some, unfortunately, I have sent some flyers telling that uh, you are also eligible to 75%. It is not. What is, then next is, what is your duties and responsibility on TCS? You have to collect. The collection is here. Unless other TCS is for in your OTF case, it is either on invoice or on uh, advance receipt, whichever is earlier you have to collect it. Then whatever you collect during the month, you have to pay to the government within seven days from the end of the month for all months. And in case of March, there is an extension that is 30 days. Then you have to file quarterly returns. Quarterly returns have to be filed within 15 days from the end of the quarter. And uh, for the March quarter, that is 45 days. Your duties and responses are simple. Collect tax at source, then pay to the government in time. If you don't do it in time, then there are penal provisions. There are interest provisions. For the delay in uh, filing returns also, there are per day fine is there. It's all things are applicable, just like TDS. And one thing uh, you have to be very clear, if somebody is deducting TDS on your bills, then you don't need not collect the TCS. So wherever TDS is applicable, 
TCS is not applicable. So government wants you be to be the part of the nation building. They want you to be just not collect the. You don't be the just a travel agent. Don't be agent only to the hotels and uh, airlines etc. Be an agent to the government also. Collect tax and pay for them. Now here some lacunas are there. I think Abdul will explain it better because here the world used is overseas tour package. Uh, so if it is then in that case if there is a single service given it is cannot be considered as a package. But when you go to the bank with the LRS it is linked to the LRS. Whenever you want to pay any LRS payment bank will definitely ask you about the TCS details. So that then in that case whatever is practically whatever is covered under LRS is automatically covered under TCS also. What is not covered on LRS, if it is built separately, just like ticketing, which is not covered on LRS, ticketing is done independently and individually, then that can be kept out of the TCS. But if you make it as a package along with the ticket and hotel, everything you're giving, then as per the law, you have to collect TCS on including ticket also. This is in uh, uh, brief because it's not a, why not? There are six, there is hardly some half a page of act is there. So uh, there is no necessity for such a hue and cry. And you are all used to the TDS return. The TCS return is just a younger brother of TDS return. So that is uh, not a not a big job. But your responsibility and uh, you know your contribution to the nation building is immense. I think you should understand that and work towards that. Yeah. Now Mr. I'll Bhatt, uh, yeah. I, no. Thank you so much, Mr. Bhatt. That was nice. I know you're making it sound very simple, but I don't. I hope it is as simple as that. But tell me one thing. I just want to ask you this well, stupid question: uh, If if the travel agents are collecting the money on behalf of the government, shouldn't they get something in return also? Yeah, yeah. This, I think you should teach Doctor Nirmala Sitaraman. <laughs> anyway, I'm not just going to do that to you. Uh, okay, Abdul Sheikh. Uh, over to you now. Let's hear your. Uh, you have a presentation you mentioned. So next five minutes over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, but sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Sanjeev. Uh, I'll just directly skip on uh, to my presentation because I've got a couple of practical things that uh, a lot of travel consultants and travel agents have asked us. So I have a bigger presentation, but I'll skip through a couple of slides, but focus on the key areas. Uh, uh, but sir has uh, definitely given a solid base and one very good thing that he has said is uh, don't make a hue and cry about this. TCS is a younger brother of TDS. So, bade bhai ko hum jante hain, chote bhai ko nipat lenge. There is absolutely no problem in that. So, without uh, taking a lot of your time, I'll just start my presentation. So, uh, this is the presentation that I have. Uh, as everyone has heard about TDS, what is TCS? So in simple terms, as Sir has also said, TCS is same as TDS. So there's not much of a difference between both of these. A very small slide, I won't go in detail about this. TDS is tax deducted at source. So when you pay somebody, you deduct TDS and then you pay. Whereas in the TCS part, you collect that extra. So if you have to pay somebody 100 rupees, you still pay that person 100 rupees. But when you collect, you collect the extra rate at which the TCS has to be collected. Uh, since uh, I'd like to stick to the time limits, I won't go into the details of this. All of these presentation is available on the GPS app as well. And this recording of the webinar will also be available. So you can go through these at, at your leisure as well. So key things is TCS an additional tax. The answer is no. TCS is not an additional tax. It is advanced tax. So whether you're a business or a salaried person, for a salaried person, TDS gets deducted by the employer. Here, you can claim this payment uh, against your uh, tax deducted by your employer as well. For businesses, when you pay advanced taxes for the quarter, you can definitely claim this as well, that you have already paid this uh, as, as part of that. Uh, we all know TCS is applicable from the 1st of October. What does it account for? Uh, all overseas travel as well as overseas education payments will attract TCS. So all overseas travel payments will attract TCS. But the key question is, uh, who has to bear this TCS? So on the overseas travel part, the individual who is traveling abroad has to bear the TCS. 
जिस बंदे का पैन यूज हो रहा है दैट पर्सन हैज टू पे टी सी एस नो बडी एल्स इज लाइबल टू पे टी सी एस द पर्सन हु इज एक्चुअली ट्रेवलिंग अब्रॉड द पर्सन हु इज गॉन आउट ऑफ इंडिया टू एंजॉय अ हॉलीडे और टू फॉर एनी अदर ट्रेवल पर्पज दैट पर्सन हैज टू बेयर द टी सी एस बर्डन नो बडी एल्स इन द इंटायर चेन ऑफ पेमेंट विल बी लाइबल फॉर टी सी एस सो पेमेंट हैज टू बी डन बाय द ट्रेवलर नो बडी एल्स गेट्स अफेक्टेड uh what all comes under tcs all foreign payments for travel come under tcs so any amount that ultimately needs to be remitted out of india under the lrs code aap log jo a2 form dete hain for remittance companies like for for example for fly remit or to a bank wahan pe a2 mein aap ek code likhte hain s0306 every payment which has to be made for travel will attract tcs now the key thing again here is all of you have heard about the inr 7 lakh ka exemption this limit unfortunately is not it's not applicable on travel transactions that means every rupee that you collect from your traveler will come under tcs there is no exemption now what all is covered any package tours that you bought from the dmc any stand alone overseas hotels or local flights overseas sightseeing food attractions food places anything which has to be remitted abroad will come under the tcs ambit irrespective of whether as bhatsar has also pointed out irrespective of whether you are ultimately remitting it yourself or making a payment to another b2b supplier in india whether you as a travel agent collects money from your customer and remit outside or you collect money from your passenger or give it to a b2b player in high in indian rupees as long as this payment is for an overseas travel package tcs will get attracted very simple provisions there is absolutely no need to worry about uh, the complications over here let's move on now understand who needs to collect tcs the first travel agent who is selling the outbound travel to the traveler will be liable to collect tcs and since he has collected it he has to pay it to the government as well so the travel agent who sells it to the traveler the actual person jiska pan use ho raha hai for lrs quota he has to pay travel agent has to collect travel agent has to pay to the government we'll talk about how the payment has to be done as well uh, going forward now what is the rate as everybody knows it's 5% there's absolutely no confusion in this that the rate is 5% and not 3.75% so it has to be collected at 5% of the total bill value okay i'll skip this example i'll straight away go to this one so who are the tcs affected parties a lot of your questions will get answered by this slide and i'll take probably one minute on this slide so if you are a foreign dmc you do not have to pay tcs you do not have to collect tcs you cannot claim tcs as well similarly if you are an overseas sightseeing or attractions or you are an overseas hotel even if you are an indian b2b consolidator or a foreign b2b consolidator you are outside the ambit of the entire law your business goes on as usual but if you are an indian b2c portal a lot of people ask about level playing field so this is the answer if you are an indian b2c portal you will be liable to collect tcs from your travelers you do not have to pay it from your pocket you do not have to you cannot claim it in your income tax return but yes the work of an indian b2c consolidator or an indian b2c portal will increase that they also will have to collect tcs similarly if you are a foreign b2c portal you will not be able to collect because you are not in india you do not have a pan or tan but the credit card company through which you pay the foreign b2c portal will charge a tcs all the banks have come up with clarifications you must have got emails from them as well whichever credit card company you have that they if you pay any service on your credit card or your debit card for any travel purposes abroad the card company will charge you tcs so yes there is a level playing field over here now coming on to travel agent selling to actual traveler yes he has to collect the tcs he he does not have to pay it from his own pocket 
since he is not paying from his own pocket he cannot claim that tcs back similarly for authorized dealer as well that is banks or or, or flyremit the collection responsibility is also on the authorized dealer but if the travel agent has collected the tcs from the traveler and paid it to the government he will get a tcs chalan that tcs chalan can be shown to the authorized dealer who will accept it and process the remittance so there is no double taxation or no double collection of tcs so don't worry about that similarly the last point is traveler who is actually the pan holder jo banda bahar ja raha hai he doesn't have the responsibility of paying it to the government but he has the responsibility of paying out the money so essentially since he is the only person who is actually bearing the burden of tcs he gets a rebate or a adjustment in his income tax so very very simple the first four guys are completely out of the ambit of tcs indian b2c portal foreign b2c portal travel agent all of them are liable to collect tcs and pay to the government the burden of paying the tcs who will bear the 5% it's on the traveler only and nobody else okay uh, so this is another confusion that a lot of people had asked that tcs amount to be collected or only the remitted amount or the amount that i collect or including gst very simple it should be on the total invoice value i have a simple example and with this i will end my talk uh this is the collection leg and this is the payment leg so you have received an invoice from your dmc of let's say $1000 at the rate of 75 for our accounting purposes that cost you 75000 rupees including your margin let's say you want to sell it for $1100 and you want to take a buffer of a uh, 5 rupees on the exchange rate so you are now selling to your customer for 88000 rupees on 88000 rupees you will charge gst at 5% which makes it 4400 so the total invoice value that you will give to your customer that is the actual traveler is 92400 on this straight away on 92400 you will have to take 5% so it becomes 4620 so now you will collect from your customer a total of 97020 that is 92400 plus 4620 total of 97020 this is what you will collect now when you make a payment you will have to pay the dmc $1000 so you go to a remittance company you for example you go to fly remit or a bank you will have to pay $1000 at that point in time the rate might be 76 whatever be the rate so you will have to shell out 76000 rupees at the time of payment there will be a processing fee there will be our charges and there will be a gst or forex none of this affects tcs don't bother about this tcs will have to be collected and paid at your invoice value just keep that in mind hence i have given the example 92400 is your invoice value tcs will be 4620 at the time of remittance you are shelling out 78703 plus you will also have to give the tcs chalan to the remittance company so that they get an assurance that on this remittance the tax liability has been discharged this slide is available on in the gps app you can all go through it at leisure and get back to us uh, if you have any questions now just one more thing before i end is you need to make the traveler understand your customer understand from your business perspective that tcs is an advance tax and not an additional tax this tax will anyway we have to be paid to the government just that is time pe jab aap foreign travel kar rahe hain you pay a part of that right now so the traveler pays 7500 rupees in our previous example he can set it off against his income tax liability for example t over here is a traveler t income tax liability for financial year 2021 is inr 50000 per year he has already paid 7500 as tcs while traveling abroad so t has to now pay only 42500 so that means 50000 minus 7500 as income tax 
Also, he can submit this TCS chalan to his employer for lower deduction of TCS on salary of of TDS on salary. So it is just an advance tax and it is not an additional tax. So don't worry about it. This is a very important point that every travel agent has to explain to his traveler. Okay, very very simple. On on Flyremit, we have created the entire system on an automatic manner. Instantly, you will come to know what is the TCS amount to be disbursed. You can upload the chalans on the TCS uh, on on the Flyremit uh, portal. Allocate the chalans to the pan holders, and then very important thing because. TDS and TCS works in a similar manner. For TCS return purposes, you will have to give a quarterly return, and at that point in time, you will be struggling. के कौन सा चलान कौन से पैन में रेमिट किया था पता नहीं. On the Fly Remit portal, everything will be digital. You can just download the report and give it to your tax consultant to upload it in the TCS return format. Things are made very simple on the Fly Remit portal as well. with this i will end my presentation i had to make it pretty quick but i think uh, uh that's the best i could have done the presentation is available uh on the portal uh back to you sanjeet sir oh, thank thank you uh, thank you abdul you really kept your time i really must appreciate that and this was very informative no doubt about it uh, but tell me one thing you make it sounds very simple uh but my question to you is that uh every travel agency would have to spend a lot more money in doing this whole work uh there will be extra would that also mean that the cost of your packages will go up uh not essentially i i would say i, I think harmandeep sir has a couple of things to say post me uh and we will talk from the travel agent's perspective but it's pretty simple you just have to add 5% collect that 5% A to the government, बहुत ही simple system है गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट को pay करने का. There will be a lot of pressure. Sandeep sir, I again share my screen for just thirty seconds over here, just to show people how simple this is, and they don't really have to worry about a lot of things. This is the income tax portal where government taxes are paid. Maybe your chartered accountant is doing it for you, but you can do it yourself. Also, very very simple. This is an online portal. Just click on this part. over here and this is just one simple form okay most of your travelers will be company non deductibles this is tax payable by the taxpayer nature of payment the government has been gracious enough to include it over here so tcs and foreign remittances just select the bank from which you want to pay all the banks are given out over here you can use a debit card as well most important thing if you do not have a tan tan number you need to get a tan uh but sir we will also reconfirm this getting a tan is a very simple process you need a tan and this is the travel agent tan select the assessment here that's it go ahead and proceed it will take you to the net banking of your bank pay it. once you pay it, you get the chalan you get a chalan and that's it your 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 things are done when you file the tds return it's uh if you do it in flyermit you get the entire format uh, as well give it to bhat sir bhat sir will go ahead and and, and file it off for you uh very very simple you really no problem you are making excellent the technology guys okay thank you excellent now thank you thanks uh, th uh, thanks abdul I, you sure make it look simple and technology does have but i'm moving on to harman now uh harman quickly your your opening remarks and what do you think uh my question to you again would be all this expenses which you will incur would that make your cost mo go up thank you sanjeet sir uh, for assisting us in organizing this session today uh, it's the most needed session of the hour probably the biggest national building travel uh, exercise through uh, the travel fraternity which has been brought in by the government it is one of the biggest exercise it we are considered as an unorganized sector the travel industry that's what all our leaders in the past have been talking about even on date they talk about it that travel industry is probably the most unorganized sector by bringing us in the ambit of gst by bringing us in the ambit of tcs by bringing us in the ambit of pan 
we are automatically becoming an organized sector because every travel professional, travel consultant, be it a proprietor now, a partnership concern, an LLP or a private limited concern, each and everyone who is doing outbound travel will need to get their tan number in place, which was not there. And it is not a big task to have your pan and tan. All the new companies which are getting registered, the pan and tan are simultaneously issued to them. The earlier ones who have uh, who are doing outbound travel will need to. There was a lot of hue and cry that this is an extra burden. As uh, one of you earlier mentioned, uh, Sanjeev ji, you mentioned that we should be asking the government to pay us some incentive for collection of these taxes. And I totally agree on that front that we should be uh, ask, requesting the government because even at the airports, when the airlines collect the charges for airport taxes, they get paid uh, remuneration. So why not ask collecting taxes as tax collectors get some sort of remuneration? That would be a good idea. And we can ask Ms. Uh, Mr. Harish Bhatt and team GMJ to put such uh, things forward to the government. And uh, by doing this, what we are doing is collecting TCS, realigning. A lot of people mentioned that those there are clients who will pay in cash. These are the clients they will continue to pay in cash on arrival. The government is looking after those. They want to check on those who have been traveling abroad. They can afford to pay for their travels, but they're not paying the taxes. So if you look at it, most of the working class people, even if they have a salary of 10 lakh rupees, anything about the threshold, the TDS gets uh, deducted. So if the plan, every month your TDS is getting deducted from your sal salary. Every quarter you're uh, filing an advanced tax. So when a TCS, when you're traveling abroad, it does not even impact your cash flow. Rather, when the TCS gets deducted uh, for, uh, for a consumer, it will be like an advanced tax. So when it gets deducted uh, by a tour operator, it aligns things. It uh, makes it more legal in a manner. And you are you are not blocking. Probably your funds get blocked, but you can always go back to your employer and tell them that my TCS has been collect, uh, deducted. Give them a certificate and they will not deduct your TDS. Similarly, you don't need to pay an advanced tax in a company. And uh, 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 Abdul, displayed the screen that it is very simple. I personally have been filing my TDS challenge for, uh, I like it. So I've been doing it for more than 25 years now that it's been a simple portal. Earlier it was a manual work. Now it's uh, uh, an automated process. India's reserve has gone up to $500 billion in the last over since 1992. In the last 28 years, our reserves have swelled. And if you look at it, the government has allowed us to remit each one, including a child can remit $250,000 per person abroad under LRS scheme, which amounts to almost 1.9 crore for every individual in a calendar, uh, in, a, in a financial year. So if there's a family of four, just imagine they can remit eight crores. If you can afford to remit large amounts, then you can even afford to uh, get TCS deducted at source. So I think uh, the UN cry about collection, yes, you will have to correct yourself. Yes, we will have more professionals coming into the industry. Yes, you will have to follow the things correctly. You need to have a tan in place. You have to have the right. Uh, you'll have to educate your accounts team. Your sales team will also be uh, also need to be aligned that yes, uh, the tax uh, whatever cost which is there just add five percent on top of that that is not a cost this needs to be explained to the client that it is not a cost to you it is an additional tax anyone paying uh, buying it on any of the online portals or uh, global portals like uh, expedia or booking.com if they think that they'll be spared out of this they, they uh, that is a wrong notion that's a myth that needs to be cleared every credit card company including companies like Neo, I would like to raise a question to my colleague. What happens to the FFMC when they issue uh, you under BTQ, $3,000 in cash? Should that not be taxed? Because that also falls under the purview of LRS. So that is something that uh, my learned colleagues here probably will highlight on that front. And uh, overall, definitely this is the way forward. We will have the right people in the industry continuing with the business. Uh, 
in a right format. So the new beginning after COVID in the new normal, probably this would be a right way forward. File your returns correctly. The GST returns, the TCS returns, have professionals do that for you. Uh, there are many uh, CAs who understand that well. So wherever you have challenge, we have uploaded both the presentations by GMJ as well as by FX card onto the GPS portal. You can log into the same and have access to that data anytime. And even this uh, seminar would be live, uh, will be available uh, once you, uh, uh, Talk shares the same, it will be available on demand. Thank you so much, Sanjay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Harman. Uh, friends, uh, those who have been sending your questions, uh, please, uh, I know, go slow. Uh, you have sent me so many questions, which is unbelievable. Uh, I'm not going to, I don't know how many we'll be able to take, but uh, trust me, the, uh, before they stop speaking, you have so many questions, which is unbelievable. But what I'm going to do is, today the format we're changing, we're just going to go question answers. We are not going to go in any other way. Uh, my request to all of you is, uh, when I raise this question, I'm not addressing it to, uh, to Abdul or Mr. Bhatt or uh, Harman. Anyone can take that question and answer that. I would really appreciate that. That would be wonderful. And please answer this uh, as quickly as possible. Don't make it too long because the way the questions are, I do not know how much time we're going to be sitting here. So uh, my only point is if you can make that, that will be wonderful. So starting with, I, I would like to go with uh, a question is, it's also from Mr. Amit Kundra. Does TCS have an impact on domestic bookings? With this, another question which has come is, if the cost, door cost includes domestic and international portion, is the TCS applicable on total or on the international portion only? Any of you can take this. I would like to take this question because there's another aspect to this question. Uh, a lot of my colleagues in the industry have been collecting inward remittance coming in from outside India for tour packages which are held outside India. For example, a client staying in London has been remitting the amount and that is coming into the INR account of the travel agent and then he is remitting out to a third party for a package in maybe Sri Lanka or Maldives. That itself is a wrong way process. You should not be doing that. Domestic packages definitely are not covered on date as on date, maybe in future a year or two down the line. Uh, the high end because as long as things are considered under luxury, they may fall under that ambit. But as on date, Domestic packages are not, but you have to consider one important thing. When you are collecting, because this is part of the LRS. LRS is entitled is an entitlement which is there for Indians traveling overseas. Indian nationals or even foreign nationals who are residing in India can avail of LRS. Uh, that Mr. Bhatt will correct me if I'm wrong later. So when the money comes in, that should come into a foreign currency account. It could be a dollar account or a euro account and banks are offering these sort of accounts to the travel tour operators. So when you are remitting to a third country, the money is not being used within India. You should get the money into those accounts and there is no TCS uh, uh, applicable in that matter. Uh, Abdul, I believe you would like to add something on this. Abdul, uh, do you want to say anything on this? Uh, because that means I need to make two bills or do I make one bill of domestic and international and then charge TCS? Abdul, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, why don't you go ahead, Mr. Bhatt, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, see, the, uh, if the OTP includes some portion of domestic also, then by default it also covers under TCS. Now, uh, that how to avoid uh, that is for the travel agent to decide. And plus one more clarification I'd like to say, because both uh, Abdul and uh, Harman has told the same thing, uh, because TCS is on the LRS. Yes, by default it is on LRS, by definition it is on the overseas, uh, overseas tour package. The definition is, definition doesn't say it is LRS. But in practice, because when you go for the remittance, you have to show the TCS, so it, by, by default it becomes LRS. Okay, uh, I can. Yeah, you want to say anything, uh, Abdul, or shall I go on? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, it is it is pretty simple that the definition talks about two major things. The first thing is the, the header of the act talks about this TCS is applicable on LRS transactions. 
and two when they talk about the collection mechanism they say any amount which is collected by the tour operator right so if that any amount includes domestic as well as international legs tcs will have to be collected on the entire amount that's the interpretation that the government is also going to take so how do we avoid it if you have an international leg bill it separately if you have a domestic leg bill it separately if that is possible that is as simple as that all right thank you so that means i need to get two bills made so you're still increasing my work okay uh, my next question to which is coming in is if tour operator or a, uh, if a tour operator has a sub agent and another tour operator who is responsible for the tcs for example say a tour operator books the hotel on expedia just to give you an example who collects the tcs Exp a expenditure or, or the expedia only collects and credits the passenger directly tour operator only collects that means the travel agent collects it or both travel agents and expedia both collect the money how does it work go ahead any of you please yeah go ahead uh, 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 i think sir can can second me on this uh, i hope so uh, uh, but sir can second me on this but the law is very clear the first person who collects the money from the traveler whoever is the first person uh, if the travel is there and then there is a travel agent and then there is a b2b consolidator and then there is a hotel this is the chain that has been asked over here so the law states very clearly the first person who collects the money from the traveler so that is you the travel agent so the travel agent will have to collect the tcs amount from the traveler give it to the government can get the chalan every subsequent movement of money can happen with the invoices of that b2b supplier plus the chalan you will not be taxed again and again i hope this is the interpretation that the government takes and i think this is the logical interpretation balance ab sarkar ke upar hai sir but sir yeah. what what do you have to say about this uh, see the unfortunately the wording is whoever sells the otp now otp sold see in principle it is simple the government wants the traveler to pay and the travel agent to collect and pay to the government that is simple now where are the checks checks is one is ultimately it has to be borne by the traveler because on his pan you will get he will get the credit and what is the other check before you make the lrs you have to show that it is is paid so these are the two checks but in between there are four people will everybody deduct tax and cascading effect that is not the interest of the law i definitely i'd like to uh, agree with abdul on that but unfortunately it is not yet clarified but but tell me one thing sir i want to ask you a sub, a sub question on this when i as a travel agent buy from expedia so i am becoming his customer and i the, i'm 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 not the ultimate user but technically speaking i am his uh, uh, customer who's buying it from him so do i get exemption or how does it work you do there is no clause of exemption so you pay the tcs expedia will collect from you and you collect from me there will be cascading effect correct so you have to work out on some scheme or get a clarif make representation and get a clarification from the government because cascading effect is to be avoided the act always uh, supports they their intention is not to collect this tax from everybody and this is not a gst that you take pay and you take credit because this credit is against your advance tax not your tcs liability so there may be in that case if you are there is multiple layers in the otp multiple layers and there may be some fund flow issue money will be blocked in each and every stage if the tcs is direct collected by everybody but that is not the intention as and today law says yes if you are selling the package you collect okay bachcha i want to ask you one question here if cancellation of tour of the last minute happens which happens in india indians are famous for last minute cancellations uh how what do you do do you claim your ts uh, tcs or how does it work the once you collect and pay to the government you have no option to refund to the client then he, that is his responsibility to get it clear refunded from the government along with his income tax returns but within the same month you got uh, let's say if somebody books the ticket on first of uh, month and you got 37 days to pay the tcs within that he cancels then it is left to you to refund him if you are not once, once you pay to the government you can't but you know i don't but see my returns have to be filed quarterly so you have got some room to adjust against other tcs but i don't suggest that because that will be that will more complicate your issue once it is paid to the government uh, you you should not uh, make any refunds you don't have the authority to refund once it is collected 
So, so what you're saying is most of the sales should take place in the first month, not in not in the last month of the quarter. That's what no, basically. No, no, no. <laughs> No, that is, I told you that is not the right way to do it. <laughs> All right, so I'm moving on to both of you. Uh, what happens in 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 a in a situation like mice? Mice is a very big movement which takes place, and that happens through the travel agent tour operator. Uh, usually, payments are not made upfront; they're given in bits and pieces and portions. How does then TCS work on there? Do I do it for the first time, or do I get it in the second portion or the final portion? When do I do the TCS? Uh, that act is very clear. It is either when you bill it or when you receive the money which is earlier. So if I if I receive, sorry, go ahead, Abdul. One thing that has to be noted over here, as we've all spoken about, that this act is for only those transactions which are attracted under LRS, right? We need to be careful whether this mice is under LRS, right? Uh, a lot of authorized dealers take the opinion that mice is not accounted under the LRS quota of the travelers. Hence, mice is out of the purview of LRS. Hence, mice payments are out of the purview of TPS. Similarly, with corporate travel as well. If a individual PAN is not used in a transaction, a corporate PAN is used, then that is not under LRS. If it is not under LRS, then the view right now with authorized dealers as well and the banks is that this mice and corporate travel will not attract TCS. They are also awaiting clarification, but that's the view that they have taken till now. I have personally done an experiment already. I traveled to Dubai last week. Uh, I booked my hotel, uh, one on an online aggregator, two through a travel agent, three. I had five nights and five different bookings. Uh, and I ensured that the ones I paid on the corporate, right, were not charged TCS by the uh, authorized dealer. The ones I had to pay through an authorized, through a travel agent, the bank at the time of remittance asked for a TCS chalan. So mice and corporate should not attract TCS. That should be the intent of the law. We will have to see clarification as we go along. So the basic view, sorry, go ahead, sir. Additionally, so if you look at it, it also says that uh, if TDS is deducted, then TCS won't yeah. be applicable. In most corporate cases, TDS would definitely be deducted on such uh, reservations, which are processed through the agents, except when they are done online, it would be a different story. So basically what you're all saying is this is only for leisure travel. It's so more, yes, it is more inclined towards the leisure travel. Uh, because that's where a lot of money has been spent. That's that's the data which has been collected by the government over the last several years. That's what the data says. All right. Uh, okay. Mo moving on quickly is if a family is traveling of four people or whatever it is, the father or maybe they are one person is paying for the whole thing. Now, how does the TCS work? He pays for it, the person, or go ahead, Abdul. Uh, I'll tell you this from a practical example point of view. Uh, the law states for LRS that if you are a family member, that's the father, mother, kids, uh, son and daughter are traveling. The LRS regulation allows you to pay for your family members, this unit. So if the father is paying for the wife uh, and the kids and his pan is being used. Then the father discharges the TCS and claims it in his income tax returns. Right. If the father and mother both pay, then they both get individual claims. So the person whose pan is being used will pay the TCS as well and get the benefit of it as well. So that that's the answer, I believe. Additionally, sir, I would I would just like to add a lot of time a group of friends travel and at times uh, probably one of them is paying on behalf of the others. So wherever, like Abdul mentioned, the pan card of the person which has been used is the person from whom the TCS would be collected because he's the person who will be remitting the payment to the tour operator or the travel agent. So the person remitting the payment from the account where it is remitted is where the TCS should be applicable. But sir, you can correct me if I'm wrong there. That if I'm yeah. remitting the amount, the TCS should be commit, uh, collected from me. You can give the option to the buyer also. If he wants, everybody should take the credit and one, very, one person pays also, that is okay. That you should give to the buyer. If he says that you 
in you know, tcs you class, uh, classify the four people traveling you can do that i think but, uh, that option should be given to the buyer not to you if the no option is given then whoever pays and you direct uh, in his name okay uh, now i'm going to move on to in fact i'm sorry i've got lots of questions from because we have some more questions to ask you but i think we have receiving too many questions from the audience at the moment so i think i need to take that uh, uh the first question which i received is from mr guldeep sani from delhi if a customer making a booking on a hotel website overseas and pays out of his lrs on arrival where is tcs involved go ahead go ahead uh so the question is that if a person is booking an overseas hotel let's say hilton dubai and he is contacted hilton dubai saying that when i arrive i will give you my card or i will give you a cash okay in foreign currency let's say a thousand dirhams how will you obtain this thousand dirhams you will obtain this thousand dirhams from an authorized dealer or an ffmc in india now all the ffmcs and authorized dealers in india have also clarified that whenever you buy foreign currency you also have to give a declaration at that point in time as to why do you need this foreign currency because you can buy foreign currency only for 17 purposes right under lrs so you once you disclose that this is part of your lrs whether it is for medical purposes overseas education travel jo bhi aapka reason hai you declare that it is under the lrs quota of yours the foreign exchange dealer will ask you to give 5% extra tcs so whether you take cash and pay at the hotel abroad tcs is still applicable and here the collection mechanism is the authorized dealer will collect it subsequent questions are going to come by if i take it from an unauthorized dealer if you take it from an unauthorized dealer you anyway out of the gambit of the law and hopefully somebody the law arm of the law is going to catch you or right, no uh, if we are here dealing everything legal so i'm not even getting into that whole concept of doing all that so that's what we will do. okay the next question is hario uh, tayal who will deduct the tds wholesaler b2b supplier retailer i think this you already answered very well uh, now this is uh, mr shamsi in case of overseas store packages if tds is deducted then there is no tcs tds needs to be on the entire amount or only on the commission amount basically uh, tds is more qualified for this uh, that's pure taxation question but uh, uh, yeah yeah and uh, this uh, tds is on the total amount because uh, it is not only on the commission i think that is uh, that uh, is already being done uh, and we are discussing tcs now why the tds only one thing is if it is covered under tds not covered under tcs uh, that is how it is normally individuals will not deduct tds for their travel it is only the corporates who end up deducting the tds so uh, the uh, individuals means who are under tax audit they are supposed to deduct okay. that they are very limited and number Exactly. So UK, yes, only in case of corporate booking. Okay, uh, Arvind, you have asked another question about who will deduct, uh, how the corporates will deduct TCS, but that has been clarified that if it is going, you don't need to do that because you'll deduct TTS. You do that. Second question is in case Arvind is saying, when we book with the TTS deduction, how do we convince the authorized dealer or a bank that the TCS is not applicable? they insist that a tcs challan should be provided true yeah go ahead uh, people who understand this law for example flyermit is one of those guys uh, in our transaction portal you have an option of tagging that this is a corporate payment once you tag this is a corporate payment the a2 declaration also will state that there is no tcs applicable on this because my corporate so and so corporate has deducted tds uh, that declaration is should be good enough for processing the remittances i know a lot of banks might not agree but this is a practical issue that you need to take a declaration from that travel agent basis a letter that the corporate has given to the travel agent this is common practice already being done so there is nothing different over here uh, at this point in time so the corporate gives a letter to the travel agent stating that this is a corporate travel and i have authorized this travel agent to conduct this corporate tour for myself and i have deducted tds that letter including the declaration that this is a tds deducted payment should go through without tcs challan 
on flyremit at least all right okay you you you're making it sound simple which i understand uh, that is something there uh, mr bhat i think we lost you you need to come back again uh refresh yourself if you can hear me okay then amit choudhary from mumbai is asking how will tcs work when a corporate is paying on behalf of their staff it's a similar thing right then it becomes corporate travel the corporate says that uh, he's, he's not, it's not corporate he's saying it's not a corporate travel uh basically mr he's not a corporate travel but the company is paying on his behalf if the lrs quota of the employees are being used then the corporate cannot make the payment exactly cannot make the payment if the lrs of me of mine is used flyremit can make the payment i have to make a payment myself all right okay so basically so that is like an incentive given to the staff which is taxable to that staff as a remuneration or whatever so it has okay. to be routed through uh, the individual uh mr bhat thank you welcome back i want to ask you this question this is vijay from akbar travels mumbai he says uh, do children when children do not pay the tcs and the parents are paying for it is there any age limit for children or children are children even at 22 <laughs> see the payment the children minors cannot make any payment it have payment always has to be made by majors only as when the majors are making the payment uh, uh, their uh, their pan is there this is on that, that account So minors do not cover in the TCS because every minor will be represented by a parent, major, or some guardian. So that means uh, there's an age limit. That means the minor will be considered till what age of 18 or something, or uh, or, they, or if they are dependent children, then what happens? Even at 22, they're dependent children. Then what happens? That much makes no difference. Whoever pays, you deduct uh, tax from them. A correct okay. tax from them. whether it is easy, whether it is a grown up man or independent dependent earning non earning it makes no difference to you who pays you you collect from him all right next question mr kaushal shah sorry there needs, there needs to be clarification on this uh, this does not mean the minors are exempt let's say there are four people traveling two majors and two minors total cost is 1000 1000 1000 doesn't mean you collect pc and 2000 You have to collect this is in four thousand because all of this four thousand dollars will be booked on the major's pan, right? So TCS is applicable on that, and the liability rests on the major's pan. Does not mean it's exempt. So basically, we'll have to discuss as an agent. You'll we'll have to discuss with the client as to how the allocation will need to be three thousand plus thousand, two thousand plus two thousand. How it needs to be uh, allocated for the purpose of TCS. Okay. Uh, moving, moving ahead. Kaushal Shah is asking this question. I think it's interesting. What if an FIT uh, ticket is issued separately, visa issued separately, and out of out of India the hotel is booking is made separately? On what service do we collect the TCS? Uh, one important thing I want to add here with regards to the visas. currently the uae visa sri lanka visa singapore visa most of these are dollar payments even uh, the visa fees for uk is a dollar payment so all these payments fall under the purview of tcs if most of the agents are paying it on their personal credit cards they should stop right away because their pan number the credit card companies will start deducting the tcs under their lrs on their credit card so immediate with immediate effect any remittance even for the purchase of flight tickets for travel of their clients outside india they should not be using their personal credit cards they should discuss it with their uh, banks with regards to their corporate credit cards whether that can be used because abdul mentioned that corporate car cards might be exempt so they need to get a clarification from the credit card companies but personal credit cards is a total no no for the usage of any remittance on behalf of the client uh the second important part even if you break up uh, the cost if it is an overseas remittance everything needs to be taxed uh, under tcs so for example my reimbursement amount is 1000 dollars i'm charging uh, 1000 rupees as my service charge the total amount needs uh, we need to deduct the tcs on the total amount including the gst amount so 1000 dollars is say 75000 rupees 5000 including gst is my service fee 
so that makes it 80000 i should be deducting the tcs on 80000 at 5% which is 4000 rupees and filing it uh, with the uh, government treasury now the biggest question is on the challans when you file the uh, name of the individual does not appear every single challan has a unique identification number so when you submit it to the money changer or the bank that gets recorded so you should not even try to use the same challan because that also is a practice with a lot of the agents ki main ye challan fir se reuse kar lunga main ye challan dusre ke liye use kar lunga it's a no no because it's a fema violation it will be there will be several other violations and you can land up in the soup because the nation building exercises put forward to the travel fraternity so the if we correct it it is only a handful of people who will be making the payment on arrival in cash but 95% of indian travelers will uh, make the payments prior to the travel this will actually bring in more business for our fraternity because uh, we will get more opportunity we cannot dissuade people from going to booking.com or any other portal and we can get more business for the travel agents they can plan it because we can assure that the tcs will be filed whereas because the person can get hold of us they cannot get hold of a third party which is probably there an online portal which may not end up filing the tcs because a lot many people say what if the tds is not deducted by the corporate if it is a corporate booking then abdul already mentioned that it's a corporate booking it may not fall under the ambit of tcs but if it's a uh, individual booking then whether it's, if it's not deducted that tcs is applicable on the same i hope that answers this, all the three parts of that question absolutely <laughs> uh, and if i were to move on because i've got a lot of questions at the moment uh, bhavnesh from mangalore it's a very interesting question if from the same company we raise or the same person i raise separate bills i make a separate bill for ticket separate bill for visa separate bills for hotel so i'm not putting a package together how do, do we still need to collect the tcs as i mentioned earlier yes you need to if the ticketing part is separate then tcs would not be up, applicable on the ticketing part as long as it is issued within india if you are using a credit card to issue a ticket outside india for a sector say london new york or uh, then it will fall under the ambit but if you are doing a hotel reservation tcs would be applicable on that uh, on the foreign remittance amount on the total amount uh, so if you look at it the gst comp, uh, part and the package all of it is falling into place now so you as a tour operator needs to decide whether you want to package it and sell it the moment you package it with a flight ticket the tcs would be applicable even on the flight ticket so if you are selling a package to euro for 2 lakh rupees including flight ticket then the complete amount you will have to pay tcs but if you are breaking it up into smaller uh, contracts that is i'll do your flight ticket separately i'll do your visa separately so if the visa fees is collected in india uh, at the consulate in inr tcs would not be applicable insurance not applicable because these are separately done now but the moment you put it as a package on the complete package it would be applicable otherwise on the hotel on the transportation on the activities that one one performs any activity outside india which falls under the purview of remittance under code s0306 which uh, which is already there in abdul uh, presentation will fall under the purview of tcs for sure okay abdul i want to ask you here something uh, if everything is broken up and there is no patour package then what happens uh, the law unfortunately or fortunately whatever that be this is a word overseas tour package okay otp right uh, but the intent of the law uh, and how the authorized dealers the banks have interpreted it it is that any payment under lrs will attract tcs so whether a visa fees collected separately and remitted separately that also attracts tcs hotel payment overseas hotel payment billed separately collected separately will also attract tcs separately so there is no distinct advantage in billing separately it will attract uh, tcs as well uh, bhat saab uh, this is an important question to you what if the person paying for the whole trip is not traveling whose pan will be applicable for example the somebody says okay i'm not traveling but you all go for example a father can tell the children and all that or or forget the father friends and then the person doesn't travel who pays for it 
You are muted, sir. You are muted. You need to unmute yourself. Uh, see, the taxation is on the sale of OC tool package, not on the traveler. So here, whoever buys it and uh, pays you money, you have, you have to collect the tax from him. Whether it travels or not, it is not a precondition. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Sonia, I hope that, that answers your question. Okay, now what, for a very... Uh, uh, Sajid, very important thing. What Bhatsar is saying is correct from taxation perspective, right? But then there is an LRS perspective. Yeah. So if you are consuming your LRS quota, you need to consume it properly. That means if I am paying for Harmandeep sir and, and Bhat sir traveling abroad because I love them and I pay for them, right? And I give my pan, I am doing a FEMA violation. I cannot use my LRS quota if I am not traveling. I cannot donate my LRS quota to somebody else as well. So if I am paying, I have to travel because under LRS, if somebody is traveling, he should use the LRS quota, payment should come from him. So if you remove these things together, then a person traveling will have to give use the LRS quota and he has to pay for it. That's one of the primary source concerns about anti-money laundering. That if you are not consuming an LRS quota, you cannot pay for it. If you are not paying for it, your pan cannot be used. But Abdul, sorry, I a lot of people oblige each other by saying, Acha bhai, tu chale ja, you've done this for me, Chutti chale ja, I pay for it and all that. So that all stops now. It is, it is stopped from day one that FEMA regulation was come in, right? But these are violations that people keep doing. And these are the things when the, when the agency wants to get behind you. These are low hanging fruits for them. Harman, you're, you're muted. You wanted to say something, but you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. सर इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ये है कि आप गिफ्ट किसको कर सकते हो और वो टैक्स कब नहीं होगा आप अपने इमीडिएट रिलेटिव को गिफ्ट कर सकते हो तो अगर आप ये कुछ दे रहे हो तो ये इंसेंटिव है सो इट्स एन इनकम सो उसकी जीएसटी की लायबिलिटी हो सकती है और उसकी टैक्स की भी लायबिलिटी हो तो जो ट्रैवल कर रहा है द पर्सन हु इज ट्रैवलिंग विल हैव टू फर्निश हिज पैन नाउ वन मोर थिंग आई वांट टू ऐड एंड अब्दुल विल हाईलाइट ऑन दैट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल से आई डोंट हैव अ पैन तो मेरे को 10% से मेरा टीडीएस कट जाएगा दैट इज टोटली इनकरेक्ट आई वुड लाइक अब्दुल टू पिच इन हियर जस्ट बिफोर दैट इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्प्लिटिंग द पैकेज देयर इज एन एडवांटेज अब्दुल इन टर्म्स ऑफ जीएसटी बिकॉज़ द जीएसटी कंपोनेंट वुड बी एप्लीकेबल एट द एंड इनपुट्स आर अवेलेबल व्हेन यू डू सो टू थिंग्स कम इनटू प्ले सो यू हैव टू स्टार्ट प्लानिंग हाउ यू वांट टू डू योर बिजनेस what is the best way to take forward your business if you have a lot of inputs coming in you have a lot of assets which are there where you can take input credits then gst plays a major role and you decide whether you want to sell as individual contracts hotel alag transfer alag sightseeing alag or you want to bundle it and operate as a tour operator as a package the moment you go into the 5% tour operator thing then your inputs you don't get the input unless it's a b2b so that's a completely different thing but abdul i would like you to highlight with regards to the talk you had with the bankers in terms of the 10% part which is mentioned in the circular but in in principle overall when you look at it it's not applicable it's yes, very interesting point 30 seconds on this uh, the law states that if you have a pan then deduct at 5% pcs if you do not have a pan deduct at 10% and discharge to the government uh, but when you deduct at 10% how will you do the remittance because for remittance you need the pan you need to show whose lrs quota is being utilized but yes uh, they can deduct because this is a income tax law if you collect from a, a passenger and passenger says i do not have a pan you deduct 10% from him right but that's absolutely useless because he is not going to get a refund of it or he is not going to get a claim of it secondly you again the travel agent will land up in a soup because when he goes to a remittance company to remit the money abroad you disclose four passengers you need four pans unless he's a kid or or is a family member right so it's it effectively avoid those payments which do not have pan and so don't no pan yeah so no pan no travel as yeah. simple as that and no tan no outbound remittance so these yeah. two things is something so one has to take thing. into consideration what did you said very very clearly on day 1 ki bhai aap income tax return nahi kar rahe ho aur bahar ja rahe ho No, that I agree. That's why I said I think it it is all come from there. Okay, I've got a very interesting question, and I want to ask this to you, Abdul. Is uh, Nagis Dadi? 
we deal with student students overseas remittance to make the process easier we use our website to collect information and also have a payment gateway can we be considered as an e-commerce platform and only be liable to pay 1% can ots become e-commerce platforms and only pay 1% is this the escape route uh, this is a pure taxation question uh, i think bhatsa will be able to answer this clearly but uh, very simply uh, bhatsa to repeat uh, the question was that the client uh, is a overseas education consultant and they collect money from their students through a payment gateway right can they be considered as an e-commerce player and deduct pcs at that 1% rate that has come for e-commerce players no no this is you are going to some different strata see this is not part of the otp so tcs is not there but now if it is uh, uh, for the e-commerce dealer that is a separate thing there is a separate section so on that there is a threshold limit and if you cross the threshold limit you have to uh, correct the tcs at source oh okay you have to do that also at that time correct yeah. that is uh, Just for your clarification, the three things which are started new: e-commerce, and for the person with the more than ten crores turnover, and uh, this uh, LRS and OTP. These are the three introduced during this year. So now, if there is a clash between those two, uh, which is which is the primary business that will be applicable first. Primarily, if it is the e-commerce provider, then he will be covered under e-commerce. If it is not that, uh, then if it is the OTP seller, then OTP. There won't be double taxation at any cost. and law is very clear if there is a tds there is no tcs so they are very the statute is very clear that they don't want to collect extra money from you they just want to see that everybody is under the ambit of taxation and they if you don't file the return and don't pay the taxes they got avenue to trace you and catch you that is the whole idea the purpose is to create a trail yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sorry just to add over here uh, if an education consultant collects money from his students and remits to the university this is a fema violation a student has to directly remit money to the university using his lrs quota the travel agents have been given special exemption by the rbi to make payments on behalf of their passengers no other industry has this exemption so if you're an education consultant you can organize everything but you cannot take the money from the student and remit it to the university this is a fema violation oh so you are all right i hope uh, dadi you understood this and now you know what way you're doing and what you're doing okay moving ahead uh, okay add, add one point on that the people who collect like this education can say collect and say they remit no they don't remit they just collect it just keep in mind All right. Okay. Uh, uh, you're leaving. You're, you're, you're leaving the cat out of the bag. We're talking about genuine people, anyways. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hello. <laughs> uh, that was intrigue. Honest people. Okay, friends. You're not asking me any more questions. I'm not entertaining. Just last four questions, which I want to go to. Uh, this is something which I need you to understand. I. This is by Jay Bhatia, your dear friend. TCS Chalan will be made available on the seventh of the month. Whereas. remittance will be made one month prior how so how will the remitting bank permit this this abdul has to answer it ha yeah. please sir sarkar kisi ko credit nahi deti correct uh, there is no credit that the government gives you uh, what the government tells you as per the law that you need to collect at the time that you sell from to the customer so if you're a travel agent you sold it to the customer or let's say on the 10th of october and you have collected let's say 5000 rupees as tcs the due date for paying this tcs to the government is 7th of november right but nowhere in the law it states that ke 7th november ko hi aapko pay karna hai you can pay today on 10th october as well so when you come to fly remit or you go to a bank nobody will send the money out without an assurance that this tcs liability has been discharged so you will have to pay tcs let's say 10th ko aapne customer se collect kiya 10th october ko you have decided to remit the money on 20th of october 
on 20th of october tcs should have been discharged and the chalan should be available now one more point to be noted over here is that chalan takes two working days to reflect in the income tax portal for verification so when a travel agent pays the tcs on the portal that i showed earlier he gets a chalan that chalan can be verified by flyer remit or an authorized dealer in t plus 2 that is payment of chalan is done on monday it can be verified only on wednesday the government says it will be verified in a couple of hours but practically it gets updated in t plus 2 so ensure that if you have to make a remittance on 20th of october you discharge and get the chalan on 18th of october minimum without chalan being verified no authorized dealer in his right senses will process the remittance because ek bar paisa chala gaya bahar nobody is going to catch the neither the travel agent nor the uh, traveler to get the tcs amount so be very careful do not give credit this is a gross violation of income tax rules which is the most stringent law in india aapne sarkar ke jeb se paisa churaya hai theek hai ye aap kabhi mat karna so collect the money discharge the chalan go for remittance only after you have discharged the chalan okay abdul i'm going to ask you another question over here which prashant kothari is saying will the ts chalan be easily available for remitting the payment sometimes we have to pay in advance remittance then what documents are needed for the remittance two is questions are over here there are two right. questions here uh, the first question is uh, is simpler if you are taking advance payment from your customer right you will have to take tcs as well on the advance amount and discharge the tcs before the due date so that is question number 1 question number 2 how do we remit uh, payments abroad which are classified as advance tour costs the government allows this but a lot of banks including us we don't allow it because if you are saying that it is an advance remittance you do not have the actual names of passengers who are traveling again lrs quota has to be utilized whenever any money is going abroad banks do not allow although law allows but practically banks do not entertain such requests nowadays that you give me the pants then we'll take the money out i know there's a business need for advance remittances uh, we have been talking to banks as well to to uh, to make it lenient to, to take an indemnity from us but looking at all the issues that have cropped up in the past two years and the enforcement directed getting into it advance remittances from a practical standpoint of view nowadays is a no no and i tell you all of this tcs law that we are talking about right now these are all offshoots these are repercussions of all of these advance remittances which have gone in government was not able to identify ki ye iske lrs quota se gaya hai hence we have come up with so remember these laws that we are facing whether bail or boon aap jo bhi bolo this is a repercussion of all these practices which may be genuine may be not genuine but because they have taken a data dump itna paisa bahar gaya itne pants match nahi ho rahe that means something is wrong in this industry hence they have come up with this stringent law so the all our day the, the pan has been collected for the last couple of years and all this exercise in the last two year was done with this purpose and agents were submitting same pan on several occasions without realizing what they were submitting their own pan now at this very moment they are at a juncture where they are not able to reconcile because Sorry. that amount starts reflecting in their 26 years as as if it was uh, the amount which has been spent by them one other important question a lot of people keep on asking is what happens to the holy trips or pilgrimage trips that also falls under the purview of lrs if it's a hajj trip if it is under lrs so now even the hajj travelers will have to have a pan in place which probably was not a requirement in the past correct me abdul if i'm wrong there whether it's a hajj travel or any other pilgrimage outside india will entitle uh, one to pay tcs the customer will have to pay tcs because there is no such exemption as now but uh, yeah. please see the, there is a exemption it's made by the structural authority etc So, if the Hajj travel is by any of the statutory authority or government sponsored, in that case, there is no TCS. Okay. Yes. Uh, last, uh, that is for the quota that goes out from the government. 
right so uh, especially for hajj what happens is you pay in indian rupees to the hajj committee in india hajj committee will remit the money abroad uh, to the hotels in in, uh, in in saudi in that transaction there is no tcs because this is a government body which is uh, undertaking the trip but 10% of the entire flow or less than that happens through this mechanism because it is quota regulated uh, 90% happens outside through private operators so simple enough for private operators if you are paying for a hajj trip or even if you are going to china uh, or or any of these uh, holy places you will have to discharge tcs on that another question which has come in which is related to this is traveling to nepal and bhutan where payments are being remitted in indian rupees itself but they are not part of india correct uh, since they are not part of india my my, my ca teacher in my in my foundation used to say that Nepal, you make a payment to Nepal. As of now, it's not part of India. He operative word as of now. It is very funny of him. Uh, hence, it is a foreign payment, irrespective of the currency that the money goes out. Uh, is uh, TCS is applicable on that as well? So Bhutan payments, Nepal payments. Lot of questions over here about that. TCS will be applicable on those payments as well. TCS will also be applicable on pilgrimage payments as well if it is done through private operators. All right. Okay. This brings me to the last question. I know you've answered this, but I really like to take this once again. Uh, Nishit Saxena, is family uh, is family traveling versus adult traveling together could be treated as the same? Uh, is if there is is there a restriction on who can pay? Is it for blood relations or my friends also? Again, my point is on your quota. It will come again, but I just would like you to ask you that. Can that means if I'm if I have a birthday or if I want to celebrate something? And if I'm taking my friends as a on a chutti or a holiday, what happens? Can uh, I do that? Pretty, pretty simple. If you are not related as per company's act definition, you cannot utilize your Alaris quota for that person. That means you cannot pay for that person's overseas trip. Very simple. So I mean, as far as I know, Sanjeev sir and uh, Harmandeep sir are not related. Bhai bhai hai, walag baat hai. uh but sanjeev sir you can't pay for hanmandeep sir's foreign trip although you like to gift him a, a, a birthday present today i know you want to take him to thailand uh, uh but you can't pay for that uh, sorry you can take him to maldives because that's the only place which is open now except dubai uh you can't pay but yes uh sanjeev sir uh, if you want to take your family members whether they're adults or they are minors and you want to pay for it you can do that you your alaris quota will be used you can pay tcs and you can claim the tcs liability tcs uh, benefit as well so unrelated parties can't pay for each other related parties defined under section uh, i forgot the section of the companies act can pay for each other for overseas trip and that person can pay tcs and claim it back as well so that's the law is very clear okay har uh, uh, harman you are muted uh, you are you are muted you need to unmute yourself Harman, I want to ask you See, one question. Even father-in-law father may not be able to pay for his son-in-law. He may be able to pay for his daughter. So we will have to look at the gift tax uh, component as well. He'll probably make that payment to me, which will come as an income. My father-in-law can make a payment to me, which will come as an income. I'll have to book it as uh, under uh, my taxation when I'm filing that it was a gift. But that would be tax under the uh, purview of that particular tax law. And then from my LRS, I'll be probably able to use it. He may be able to gift it to his daughter. But Harman, I'm going to ask you the last question before we wind up. In fact, we are really out of time now. This is two questions in one in a way. First of all, do you think that uh, the numbers will grow or, or will it come down because of all these restrictions coming in play? Will the outbound numbers really grow or be the same, or will they really come down? And second thing, if all this is being done very clearly, uh, why are the travel agents so? Upset about it? Why they are up in ar arms against this? These are the two questions which I really need to ask you. If you look at the numbers, because of the current position, unless the flights and the countries open up, the numbers definitely will not go up. But if the industry was to stand where it was in March uh, before the lockdown, then definitely the numbers would have gone up. A lot of things would have been streamlined. Initially, the first week of February when the budget came out, people did not understand the repercussion or did not understand that. tax i floated this budget a lot of people did not understand what i was trying to get i was telling them that 
this tax has come into play you will be you will it will become our industry will become more of an organized sector as against an organized sector because the elements which are not required those who can't have a tan will automatically move out so there will be more business for the right type of people they will be able to do it more professionally they will have a better service fee component involved because they are doing a lot of work on behalf of the customer on behalf of the government so they are doing as such uh, the un cry people need to understand they should uh, ask these questions what next because when gst came in there was a lot of un cry when service tax so any any tax any country which when it comes in there are bureaucrats sitting whether there is one bureaucrats are there they have been following things over uh, over a period of time like abdul mentioned a lot of money has gone out a lot of money has gone out of the country incorrectly it has take, taken us almost 30 years to build those reserves which are there we cannot go back to 1990 where we, we we almost were a bankrupt nation so a lot of governments have done a lot of work on their part over the years as a nation building exercise now it is the time of us like you mentioned ask not what you can do for your country say what you can uh, do for the country so that's where it comes in now it is time that we as uh, indians as uh, the nationals of this country put in our efforts to take correct the next generation will reap the benefit of whatever we do correct today so i feel Thank that you. my children will be doing the uh, uh, benefit of whatever i saw today all right i understand hanman totally but all before right. i end uh, abdul i want to ask you one last question because this gentleman has been pestering me uh, you gave the answer but i want you to answer that again is ts tcs applicable on medical tourism packages abroad you are muted you are muted uh, uh sorry uh, tcs is applicable on all lrs remittances so that's foreign travel foreign medical education purposes maintenance of close relatives uh, immigration abroad all of these things subscription payments that we do so not only travel is concerned okay don't worry that only humko target kiya gaya hai all all lrs payments right uh, is, uh, the only thing that has been targeted against us is that we have not been given the exemption of 7 lakhs that's quite unfortunate okay that is the only thing that i am up in arms against that why have we not been considered under the 7 lakh quota uh, that is the only thing which is objectionable but everybody else sabke upar aap paisa bahar bhej rahe ho you send money abroad you will be liable to pay tcs one thing that i also want to answer uh, for your previous question uh, is will the volumes go down will it affect business i'll give you plain statistics okay pan has been mandated for the past two financial years okay april 2018 every remittance which had to get out from india had to be accompanied with a pan so identified the person who is paying for it right two things happened over there one there was poor compliance from the fraternity okay this has led to today jo aaj tcs law aaya hai i i personally feel as this is a repercussion of that the poor compliance of that but two in spite of a widespread compliance also by by a lot of travel agents by giving pan at that point in time two years back everybody said the same thing is do dhanda khatam hai dukan band kar dete hain business grew can any one tell us even one travel consultant who is available there are 500 to 1000 people on this webinar here today can one consultant say that he made less money in 2018 compared to 17 no did he make less money in 2019 compared to 18 no business grew in spite of the compliances that pan is mandatory right hence i believe that business as harmandeep also said that business will come to good travel consultants business will come to organized travel consultants business will only keep growing and india is a huge market volumes will grow yes there is a temporary phase of covid post covid we business will continue that's my gut feeling Abdul, I love your statement, which says temporary COVID. I like that. I love it. It's 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 like that. But okay, you confuse some with 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 somebody with your answer. So I want to ask you this question again: Is TCS applicable for NRIs booking from India and flying out of 
India. Both you said the foreign I'll, money could go. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll like to answer that question as I mentioned earlier. NRI is not entitled to avail the LRS quota, so he should not be making the remittances here. He should be sending it to your foreign currency account, and you should be remitting out of that account. The LRS resident in India, as also foreign nationals working or resident in India, it's for a resident uh, person in India, not for an NRI. That is the most important part. Abdul, I would like to ask one question here to uh, my esteemed. Uh, Colleagues here, cruising overseas, a cruise booked maybe on Dream Cruise or uh, NCL or any other cruise for that matter outside India. All those amounts are collected in INR in India. Do they also fall under the ambit of LRS? Similarly, Rail Europe, which is uh, ticketing, train ticketing or Japan Rail Pass for that matter, the amounts are collected in INR. But end of the day, the remittance goes out. Would they be considered similar to the A ticket component, which like uh, British Airways or Emirates or any other airline for that matter collects uh, the amount, but end of the day, that amount is also remitted outside, but that is not under LRS. So would cruise uh, component, which is collected as a separate standalone component in INR or rail Europe component or a train component, which is collected in INR, would this fall under the embed of LRS? Should these operators start collecting TCS on that component and start remitting? Because till date, it was not part of the BTQ. It was not exhausting your BTQ in the past. So I'm not very clear on the LRS part of that. I think that's uh, okay. whether uh, it's part of uh, LRS or not. Uh, also, there are, I think there are two parts to this question. That is it part of LRS or is TCS liable? Right. And uh, I think Bhatsar can correct me over here because initially, uh, sir also told, and the law is also very clear, although it is taxing the LRS umbrella payments, but it does not tell you that if you collect money, you have to necessarily remit it abroad. It is delinked to that. The law states if you collect any money from a traveler, which is for an overseas travel program, right? TCS is applicable. Whether you remit or not, that law doesn't talk about it. But sir, do you want to say anything on this? Uh, I think he has cleared it. Uh, you know, the only thing what I can say is if it is single, you are just buying the ticket, uh, nothing, nothing. It is not a part of the package. It's not part of the package. Then maybe you can take a stand and not code under TCS. But when it's part of the package, whether it is uh, visa, tips, uh, air, train, or whatever it is, part of the package, everything is covered under TCS. Okay, thank you very much. But my last question, which everybody has been asking me, at least 25 people have asked me this question. So I'm asking you this last question. What about international destination weddings? Shadi karwani ke liye, main 400 log leke jata hu. Things of those kind. I'm paying for the whole thing. Now what happens for weddings abroad? Where do where does this go? Do I ask every one of my uh, person who's coming there? Ki meko apne kote mein se paisa do? How does it work? And uh, I think see uh, when the destination marriages are done, ticketing is done separately. Hotels are booked separately, and they directly pay to the hotel. And whether they pay out of their LRS or their business account, that is uh, their call. So then bank will take care of uh, uh, TCS on that because it's paid off the LRS. It is not a tour package. The, if the, ah, okay, if you are making a tour package for the destination wedding, you are telling actually, then you are covered under TCS. Otherwise, what is usually done for the destination marriages, then separate, there will be some domestic manager there, there will be some coordinator here, tickets are done separately, many people uh, charter the flights, and the hotels are booked separately, etc. So that uh, case to case, we can't see a standard the rule whether it is applicable or otherwise. But generally, it can be, it may be out of the TCS. Uh, it is possible. Abdul, Abdul, the time. Sorry. Abdul wants to answer on this because he has mentioned earlier that you can't give anyone else to LRS. Nahi de sakte. The same standard would be taken here. Absolutely. Ki, uh, I will also have my wedding, other... and ask them this question. Uh, uh, 
वैसे आई एम जब भी कोई शादीवादी की बात होती है आई डोंट रियली एंटरटेन दो गाइस बिकॉज आई डिस्करेज सच काइंड ऑफ बिहेवियर सो आई डोंट डू सच काइंड ऑफ रेमिटेंसेस एज़ वेल सो आई थिंक आवर सिस्टम इज नॉट डिजाइन टू अकोमोडेट डेस्टिनेशन वेडिंग्स ओके सो दिस काइंड ऑफ बिहेवियर इज लाइक नॉट एंकरेज ऑन आवर प्लेटफॉर्म बट यस डेस्टिनेशन वेडिंग ऑन डेस्टिनेशन वेडिंग रेमिटेंस आल्सो गोस अंडर एस 0306 it it also goes under s0306 so the bride or the groom's family will be impacted and they will have to pay that is my personal take on the same that uh, because the remittance is done and i am i am booking it on my behalf others are just coming and staying there that is how it will work because i'll be traveling there so that is my personal take on the on the same that the uh, person who is hosting because nowadays people work it the other way around that like mr but said that i have booked the hotel you can book uh, these are the rates you can pay directly so that time the individual uh, will uh, the lrs would be impacted but if one single person is making the payment again if the flights are separate then uh, it's a charter or whatever that component will not need to be taxed but the rest of the components if it it forms as a package or even if it's hotel reservation that i'm remitting uh, decoration whatever because major of the expenses will be my expenses uh, as a host at the destination if if i'm uh, uh, having a destination wedding overseas abdul i really uh, mr bhat you didn't need to answer this because see the point is people most of the guests buy their own tickets and come there uh, we provide yeah. them the hotel stay i look after the food and everything and i look after yeah. the entertainment and the decoration and everything now obviously money has to be limited for all this where does the whole this the lrs come into the picture in terms of the quota system will go out of it or how do will this work in future i think the lrs will allow you to spend for uh, you know and for others also it doesn't stop you you have to say why you are spending uh, you know if if i want to say uh, you know send my relative for a medical treatment i use from lrs uh, there is i don't think there is any ban on that as abdul said yeah right you are giving a declaration why it is so then you have to say that for the relative whatever it is so that uh, remittance is possible and plus whether destination wedding is possible within the lrs limit or outside the limit if it's outside the limit then usually the family members use separate lrs limit uh, to uh, make the booking or uh, if they are got, got any corporate entity they will make the booking through the corporate entity this is case to case you can't have any general view on this destination wedding because that lot of planning goes that that in that even the tcl planning also will come into picture hey but sir i don't agree with you how can how can i put a wedding which is a very personal thing in a corporate account sir uh, but that for that you have to come to me personally and discuss <laughs> all right <laughs> okay i'm not getting into that with you now at the moment but fair enough so that means you is possible and we can do that and uh, that means you have to make provision wedding. sorry yeah man so even for domestic wedding even when there's a destination wedding happening which will now be more prevalent under the covid scenario the host the parent the uh, the groom or the bride's parents are the ones who are doing the expenses they are booked as their expenses similarly for overseas they will be booked as their expenses if they want to do so so they can use the lrs of the maybe the bride the groom their family members if it is exceeding the 2 lakh 50000 limit which is there and uh, they just pay the tcs so i don't think because they will when they report their return they will say ki i have spent 2 crore rupees on my uh, daughter's destination wedding so there's nothing wrong with that as long as you are declaring it i don't think there's anything wrong with that and the tcs would get deducted from you personally and you can take a claim on that Okay, let's not uh, preempt the government and see how they react. So I'm going to leave it at this over here. As we go along, I think we'll understand how the whole system will work. But anyway, I really want to say thank you to all of you. I think you, uh, all three of you, have been brilliant. At least answered a lot of questions. And uh, some of you, I could not take your questions. I'm sorry about that. But we are really out of time. Uh, we have gone over one hour forty minutes. We didn't realize it takes so long. But thank you very much for attending and your questions, which were really, really uh, exciting. a lot of questions really got answered when abdul made his presentation so those questions i did not take uh, otherwise it was really important and very really good to understand this whole process i wish you all luck 
and i hope that uh, you don't have any problems on this anymore uh, because this is advanced as 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 bhatsab said this is advanced tax which you are charging them so it should work and you can take your money back from them that's what basically you would look forward to it so do your work and what abdul said do your work diligently don't leave any loopholes that they become the government comes on top of a head with more stringent rules then we're going to really crimp and uh, thanks uh, harman for your help in putting this whole thing together uh, and that also on your birthday thank you very much have a great day all of you and those who want to look at this recording it will be available tomorrow onwards on facebook so we'll send you the link is available you can you can download it and look at that completely thank you very much everyone and bhat saab abdul saab and harman saab thank you very much and it's a pleasure to have you all here with us today thanks a lot goodbye bye bye thank you so thank much you. Thank you. thank you so much